bloody debate of last Wednesday, Roma and I have the pleasure to interview the candidates for presidency and vice presidency of the BD in the list Beavers for Change, Yassine Benjeloun and Claudia Levinson. During this interview, they will have the opportunity to develop their ideas, tell us more about their plans and projects if they are elected president and vice president of this BD. And they should be there in five minutes. <music> and Vice Presidency of the BD in the list Beavers for Change. Can you tell us a little bit how is your campaign going? What is the state of your finances? Yes, first of all, Raphael, Roma, thank you very much for having us today. I'd like to thank the um, Sundial newspaper to, to in, have this interview going. Um, uh, I feel that this space between us is a bit far. I mean, I know you guys very well and this is a... Uh, I'd like to be more and more Warm. It's actually quite weird to be talking to the camera, it's my first time, so I'm a little nervous. Anyways, how is our campaign going? Well, Claudia, um... Well, our campaign has gone through several phases. I'd say we had to start with an event, so we started out with a bang because we needed to prove to people that we were a serious list, you know, because we don't have five members on the BDE. Then, um, you know, we had to release all of our points. Obviously, we're not just running on the basis of a party or in personalities. And now we're just trying to talk to people, basically talk to everyone that we can. Um, right now we have a coffee and croissant set up um, and we're just trying to have face time with everyone to see what their concerns are and see how they're feeling about the elections. With regards to finance... Um, finance has been going well, yeah. yes. Our it's, treasurer is very competent. Yes. It's, it's a bit difficult. We've had, um, we've had a nice, uh, by the way, I'd like to thank the current BDE for their don donations. They've, they've helped us a lot, a lot uh, for our campaign money. Um, but, but besides that, I mean, it's going great. It's, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, this, is, this is incredible. Um, it's, it's almost like real life politics in, in a way. I mean, the campus spirit has been going for the last two weeks. It's just been all we're, we're hearing and all we're talking about. Um, it, it's just wonderful for, for me anyways. Lots of fun. So why, in the first place, did you decide to run for, well, for basically BD uh, <laughs> elections? What were your motivations for doing this? Wow, that's a very good question, Roma. Um, thank you for that. Um, well, to be completely honest with you, uh, I've been wanting to run for BD, BDE sorry, from, from quite a long time. I mean, Claudia yeah. and I have been wanting to run for quite a long time. And how did it start? Well, I think from day one, since, since I arrived on campus, since I think it was Faustine who threw eggs on my head for in this integration it was called. Since that day, I've You loved, wanted your revenge. I wanted my revenge, I'll get it, yeah. I'll get that. But, but more importantly, it's that I've just loved being in Haas and I loved being in Sciences Po and, 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 and since, since the beginning I've made friends that I think I will keep for the rest of my life. And, and academics are going great, the teachers are wonderful, classes are so interesting, and I just, I want to be able to give what I felt during these first days, and still today, to new students arriving well, next year. First of all, it's a way to give back, and second of all, I think there was a definite need on this campus for democratic elections. I mean, never before have we had competing lists, and I think, um, you know, our personal agenda aside, the advent of actual competition has greatly increased both lists and has challenged them to do a lot more. Okay. What are you going to keep from the former BD and the work that has been accomplished during this year? Mm -hmm. And what would you change or improve in uh, what they have done? Yes, Raphael. So, first, I'd like to thank the current BD, Alison, Remy, Adam, Mila. They've all done a wonderful job, a lot of hard work. I know, I, I, I can only imagine how it is, and I'm looking forward to, to being able to actually work as hard as them, hopefully. And if we win. If, of course, not going to win. And so what, what we would like to keep is um, what, what has been the big institutions, you know, Yellowween, um, what else have we done? The trips, Winter Wonderland, Winter Wonderland. The, the trips were amazing. I mean, Amsterdam. Having been in the BDE this year myself, I mean, I recognize the tremendous amount of work that everyone puts in. And 
Some things have been great successes, but our campaign slogan, Beavers for Change, is just a recognition of the fact that we're not afraid to recognize when things don't work and throw them aside because we are a new campus and we're not tied down in traditions, but we have to be very selective in the ones that we want to uphold. And the campus in a week's time is going to be electing a new BDE and a new president, and if they choose our list, well, they are going to get change. And so I think that that's, that's important and, and uh, we, should, we should, you know, like you mentioned, Claudia, we, we want to bring new ideas and, 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 and keep building on what was already uh, done by, by Alison in, in her list. But yes, so. You said during your campaign, and basically it's in on your list, that you had the impression that the campus was not united enough, that somehow be, some beavers were actually left aside of mm -hmm. campus life. So could you well, elaborate on this, yeah. and how would you remedy to that issue? Absolutely. Romain, it came to my surprise, and I don't know if you're aware, but during this campaign I've talked to a lot of, of, of students on campus, and we've changed a lot of emails and a lot of face-to-face -face, you know, time just during lunch having a discussion. And it, it came to me that some students on campus don't, don't even use Facebook. They don't even have a Facebook account. And I and know furthermore, they're, they're really irritated by the fact that they have to rely on Facebook to know what's happening. So we're trying to find other methods to reach people. Um, simple things, having a calendar up at all times with specific dates. I mean, I don't know when to book my flight back home because I don't know when anything is. Um, and it, it would just really help uh, to have different means. I mean, Allison said nobody went on the website this year. so. We can try and update it, but that can't be the only thing. Um, we can use the ENTG more with concise emails, um, with points of when things are happening, and they need to be released on a monthly basis. Also, another point that's very um, integral to our campaign is trying to incorporate more people that, at the start of the school year, were a little bit timid about speaking English. I don't know if you want Absolutely. to speak to this. Yeah. Um, and, and vice versa. I mean, some some students were timid about speaking French, right? And you know, to get to get your baguette in the morning, you need to speak French. And, and so, so I think that having, I mean, our campaign is is bilingual. We could have done this interview in French, but but I think this is a focus we, we should bring in, in, in on campus at the beginning of the next year. And um, as I said, uh, all almost eighty eight percent of our news goes through uh, Facebook. And, and so for students who don't have that, it, it's crucial to, to get m information passed through by, by another means. Okay, so another question about one of your promises. Yes. You pledge to allocate 5% of the budget to those benefiting from state scholarship. Mm -hmm. It would then be given to the administration, which would distribute the money to the students who need it. Mm -hmm. Did you get the green light from the administration to carry out such a plan? And why involving the administration and not letting the BDU treasurer taking care of this? And will the students uh, have to ask the money directly to okay. the administration? Well, so, yeah, thank you, first of all, for yeah. asking this question, because I think after the debate, people were quite put off or quite confused as to this. I, yeah, why yeah, don't you go first? Absolutely. Um, now, first of all, I'd like to make it clear that um, we are reserving a, a sum of money, putting aside a sum of money in the BD, from the BDE's uh, expenses with, with the budget. It's one thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars because it's five euros. percent of, of euros. Yes, sorry, uh, the current um, BDE's budget, and um, yeah, so, that's part of our budget. The only reason that we thought to involve administration was to make it more objective because we don't want it to seem like we're just giving money to our friends or. That was the only thing because they have intimate knowledge of people's finances and stuff like that. If people are uncomfortable with that, I mean, well, we, we this was also in my discussions with students raised, and you know they're willing to come talk to the president of the BDE or any other member of the BDE instead of going to the administration. You know what is very I want to be very precise. It's that one thousand eight hundred and fifty euros next year will be put aside, and if not used completely, will be put back in the budget of the BDE. Okay, and this money will be put aside in order to help students because, yes, students who can't afford um, um, to go to Amsterdam or to buy readers uh, are within our community and I think we should be able to, to help out if ever we can and give them the extra 30 euros that will allow them to buy the readers um, uh, if, if, if that's the case. And the only way to know that that's, if that's the case and to make sure that we're not just giving away money to our yeah. friends is to have a back check, a background check.
and also, you know, so after the debate, like, we got a lot of emails, and it, most of the people said they would be more comfortable speaking to Yasin or to myself. So, we, yeah, we might have to, uh, um, to change that. Because in the end, we just thought they might be more comfortable speaking to someone of position who's older than them. But um, if you'd rather speak to, like, a friend, um, then Absolutely. you can speak to us. And I'd like to, to make it clear to the whole campus as well that this is completely anonymous. No, in no way will we reveal the names of people who come and ask us for, for the extra 30 euros. There that, will be no stigmatizing yeah. if you ask for money. Um, it's going to be very discreet. Um, and yeah, we have to talk to the administration. We have to set up um, a specific mm -hmm. procedure. And by just basing myself on, on, on the emails we've got and people who we talk to, I think this measure will only affect uh, about approximately 20, 10 to 20 students. Yeah. So I'm sure that the 1,800 euros will not be used completely. Which will grow next year, though. Absolutely, so because to, more students yeah. will come on campus. Yes. Okay, so still in your program, um, you said that you want to provide the students of Sciences Po with, I quote, academic and cultural opportunities that rival those of Sciences Po Paris campus. And of quote, um, your plan to actually fulfill this promise is basically by organizing live uh, video conferences mm -hmm. or uh, by, uh, well, basically uh, planning trips to Paris uh, for those who want to attend conferences in person. Don't you think that your objective and the propositions you make to fulfill it are a bit contradictory? And wouldn't it be better to actually attract, for example, lecturers or persons of importance to Reims instead of, well, planning trips for Sciences Po uh, students to go to Paris? That well, I, I don't think that the two have to be mutually exclusive. I mean, yeah, it would be great if everybody would come to Reims first, but at the same time, if they're not, well, we're gonna, still going to take advantage of our proximity to Paris and go to those lectures or... Um, you know, have people come here. That was um, not part of our initial campaign, but after talking to people, there was a huge demand for it because people really felt like, you know, our connection to Paris wasn't really taken advantage of. And um, if I can expand on that, not only is our connection to Paris not, not good enough, but our connection to all the other campuses of Sciences Po in, in France, and that's one thing I'm sure we'll get, we'll, be, we'll have time to talk about, make that bond, those bonds uh, stronger. But to come back to, to Paris, I mean, Romain, you've, you've, you've brought up a very good idea, and to be honest with you, I haven't thought of it. But at the same time, I'd like to defend myself by saying that I think that it's not, it's not our job. We have the DLS, the DLS for that, to bring very attractive lecturers. And I mean, the BDE can't do everything, but I, I'd love to work harder with the DLS to try and attract more of these, of these lecturers that, that are not so far. I'm sure, you know, even in Reims, we have great professors teaching in universities here. And so um, uh, I think that, you know, it's, it's helping and using all the associations we have on campus. That, that will allow us to, to make your ideas like this more, more concrete. And it is the job of the DLS, but if somebody came to us very excited about having a certain lecture, we would make it happen. We have members of the DLS on our team. Mm. We would talk to them and we would encourage it because, yes, we are specifically the BDE, but um, we want our goal is to improve student life in general. And if that's what they want, we can do and what we can. Having video conferences of, of, of you know, ministers yeah. that come talk to Paris, I'm not sure they'd be able to come here in Haas. That's, that's improving the life of, of our students here on campus. My question is going to be more personal. Yes. Yasin, you're running for presidency, Claudia for vice presidency. How do you perceive your respective roles in your future busy if you are elected? Sure. Ladies first. Um, okay, well, uh, having watched Mila this year, um, I specifically wanted the role of vice president because I think it has a lot of uh, freedom in it, and I get to explore new projects. I, my job is also to oversee everyone, to support Yassine, um, to make contacts with the first years. I mean, the job of the BDE is an enormous job, especially if the campus is growing, and I think we're going to be doing a lot of work, but I feel like our main job is to identify well, like any leader, to identify specific skills of people and um, make sure they get it done, make timelines, deadlines, um, yeah, and, and just make contacts to everyone that we need to. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, now, big question for the president. What is my role? You know, I think I, I will obviously, I mean, the title says it all, I'll have the role of a leader. Uh, I guess I, I'd, be, I'd have to be the one that, you know, you can talk to if there's any problem. I'll be accountable for any, you know, if there's a problem during one of the events, I'll be accounted responsible and I'm willing to take this responsibility. And that's one of the big roles I think the, the president sh should have. 
but I'm also, I'm also, I believe, I'm also someone who, who is, you know, easy to come talk to, and, and that's the role of the president, you know, it's to be someone that could go talk to people and, you know, be funny, take everything, uh, you know, a little with a sense of humor, I guess, um, and, and, and also uh, be, en français, on dit une interface, je serai l'interface between the administration, the student body, and, 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 and every event that occurs in Reims. And, and so, also, you know, earlier this week, Yassine and I spoke to Nathalie Jacquet and we asked her the same question, like, what is our job on this campus, um, you know, when we were thinking about running? And she told us, you know, you have to be irreproachable, you have to be an example, and you have to uphold, you know, the pride of your campus. And that's a very abstract goal, in addition to all of the technical ones of making sure that things are done. But that's always something, that's something that stuck with me. Like I said at the beginning of our interview, make sure you know that the first days you, 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 when you get here on campus in Sciences Po, it's the best days of your life and it keeps, it stays that, that way for the, the rest of the year. So that's one thing I'm going to work hard on. Okay, so basically as Claudia, you mentioned uh, in, in your last answer, the campus will once again be growing next year, probably to 300 students, which is considerable. Um, how do you think this is going to shape uh, your thinking in a, well, if you are elected, a president and vice president, and how will this concretely impact your actions? Well, a little disclaimer first. 300 is still not huge, so I feel like there's, our main events can still be conducted as one campus. We can still have a gala where everybody goes, <coughs> and the same for Yellowween and for Winter Wonderland, and even certain trips. But I think the main objective with the growing campus is to create a more diversified uh, types of events. We need to expand our day life, um, we need to create more, uh, you know, targeted events to specific people to engage the whole campus. Because, to be honest, they're not going, we're not going to be able to have 300 people come to an apéro, but we're going to, you know, be able to find out specifically what people are interested. You know, we mentioned a casino night, um, a movie night, I don't know, simple things like that that can be done in groups of 30 or more, in addition to the big events that bring everybody together. Absolutely. By, by dividing, I think, and using the associations on campus and communicating with them, we'll be able to, to have, you know, a, a second option for those who don't want to go drink every Friday night on, on Place Berlon, you know, allowing them to maybe meet somewhere in Reims or on campus, you know, if we could open a, a room and have like a, a checkers night or chess game or movie night or a reading, you know, talk about a book they've read, you know, things like that, that could engage people in, in many other ways than, of course, always have the drinking option. I mean, we don't yeah. want to get rid of that, <laughs> but, but um, have both actually is something I think. Uh, and I think also one thing that I was thinking about is a lot of people when they come here are extremely young and to come into an environment like that and just be told that your main activity, uh, social activity, is to drink. I mean that's so much social pressure. I mean some people have had their first drinks here and have not known how to handle it and so we just want to maybe lessen that pressure but still the opportunities will be available. So last question to end this interview. Already. Yeah, it's too bad. The campaign is drawing to a close. Why would you like uh, your fellow Beavers to remember on the day when casting the vote? First of all, remember to vote because we do need a certain percentage of the campus to vote in general. Um, I could actually understand that why Obama says, you know, you have to vote. It's very <laughs> important. I actually, I never, I was always thinking that he was saying that for just for for the sake of it. But yeah. that actually, it's very important, guys. I mean, if I could address a message to the whole campus, please vote. Um, second of all, uh, remember, well, first of all, I would encourage you to go through the promises of both lists. Really think about it. Think about what's feasible, what's important to you. And if you have any questions, I mean, email us. Uh, talk to us in person. We'll be on campus the whole day. Um, the whole week? The, week? The, well, the whole week, but specifically that day. Mm -hmm. And what to remember about our specific team, um, we're very open to new ideas. Uh, we are a new team, but we're a very competent one, and if you trust us, you won't be disappointed. Uh, I'd like to say something. Um, we've been criticized during this campaign as being unprofessional because we did not do the phone calls with RMS, we did not hook up the best sponsorship with BNP Paribas. Yeah. Uh, but, Dress up and take pictures in the library. But, but we just... To be honest, um, we, we didn't think we had the legitimacy to do it. We were not the BDE in the makings list, right? I mean, we're not, 
we're not six of us are not part of the BDE. We've selected our group because we are from different arrays of, of, of associations in, 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 on campus. We have uh, uh, we have a, a Medicrit organizer who's organized for a thousand students. We have a DLS. We have student reps. It's very heterocrit, if I may use French, um, and. By that, as I said, we, we, we did not feel that we were able to, you know, just call RMS and say, hey, we're the BDE, can we uh, hook up a deal? Because we're not the BDE, not, not until next week, hopefully. Yeah. And, and, and so, so that, that was very important, you know, that, that, that kind of puts a wall between what we could do and, and what we were going to do during the transition period, which we count on to, to get these deals and get these connections, you know, that we're lacking right now. But like Claudia said, you know, look at the promises and it's not about making 27 promises that will not be done because they are completely uh, unfeasible, right? It's about making 12 promises, I think, that are very concrete, very, very to the goal. I mean, I had a discussion with, with one of our students and she said, listen, there's something very, very easy I'd like to fix on campus and it's having more microwaves because when I cook my lunch, I, I have to wait half an hour. You know, something like that is, is on day one on my agenda. You know, as soon as we get into power, I mean, get into power, as soon as we become the BDE, the, I've been watching too much TV debates. As soon as we get into the BDE, it's, it's I mean, contacting the student reps, contacting the, the, the administration and having two, three extra microbes put on, on, on in the student lounge. Just make life easier on but, campus. Yeah. More engaged. And, and that's what you can remember. Sorry. Please. On D-Day, remember that we have good ideas. We are uh, completely, I mean, our group has been unified and we, we, we love each other, we're like a family. I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna see you many times more, even if we're not elected, Claudia. It's been Thank wonderful in campaigning with you. And, and that's very important. It's actually, who do you want your BDE to be next year? Thank you very much. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you, Romain. It's been a pleasure for us too. Thanks. <laughs>